About 300 years ago, during the Liang Dynasty in China, Buddhist priests often found themselves the favorite victims of attacks by bandits and highwaymen. They responded in a rather unpriestlike fashion by creating a system of self-defense, which is to this day unequaled for its deadly effectiveness. Thus was born the vigorous art of karate, a form of self-defense in which no weapons of any sort are used. In fact, in Japanese, karate means empty-handed. Through practice and training, however, the hands become weapons in themselves, and such effective ones that no form of offensive attack can overpower them. The art of karate, as we know it now, was developed by the natives of Okinawa. Little or nothing is known of its history and development there, and it remained a mysterious art, more talked about than practiced in other parts of Asia, until 1922, when the Japanese Ministry of Education invited Gichin Funakoshi, an outstanding exponent of karate, to give an exhibition in Japan. The Japanese soon showed a keen interest in the development of this unusual art, and during the years this interest grew even stronger. At present, its popularity is increasing tremendously, to the extent that it is now finding its way into the Western world. <laughs> Karate uses every striking surface of the body, both for defense and for attack. Especially important are the hands and feet, which are systematically trained until they become the most formidable of weapons. Since karate is essentially a defensive art, they become defensive weapons, to be used when attacked, in which case they are also used for counterattack. The various kinds of punches used in karate are the rising forward punch, the side sweeping punch, the hook punch, the inverted forward punch, the U punch, and the double forward punch. The basic movement is the ordinary forward punch. Unlike the boxing punch, however, in karate the body does not follow through the movement. Rather, the entire body, with emphasis on the hips, is stiffened at the moment of impact, then instantly relaxed so that balance is never lost. Just as important in karate as the punch is the kick. There are various kinds, among them the forward kick, the side sweeping kick, the side snap kick, and the side thrust kick. When properly mastered, these are even more powerful than the punches and may be used most effectively as a surprise counterattack. Needless to say, to be used successfully, this technique requires considerable practice. The basic principle of karate is that a strong defense is the best possible offense. In deflecting an assault, the block is executed in such a way that the most effective counterattack may be instantly used. Thus, in karate, the defender, paradoxically, is almost always assured of victory over the attacker. If the block is forcible enough, however, there is often no need for any further counterattack. In other cases, the opponent's attack is both anticipated and prevented by a suitable counterattack.
formal exercises is one of the most important facets of karate training, for in this art the body must be made into a veritable weapon. These so-called kata, or sets of exercises, include all the various kinds of punching, kicking, and blocking, so that all kinds of imaginary attacks are successfully blocked and followed by effective counterattacks. There are more than 50 sets of such exercises, most of which were long ago developed by karate masters so that the students might practice by themselves. Some kata emphasize elaborate movements as in speed. Sparring with another student comes only after one has become thoroughly familiar with the basic movements of karate. In these mock fights, the attacker is prearranged and the defender is required to apply the block proper to the mode of attack, following with the counterattack. Karate is also most effective in any kind of weapons attack, for example, in defending oneself against an attacker with a knife. Boxing and karate share some common elements but are actually quite different. In this earlier film comparison between the two, it will be noted that feet are most important in boxing. In karate, it is the combination of various kinds of punches and kicks plus speed and agility, which make the karate expert by far the more formidable opponent. More recently, the art has been gaining popularity among women. Since brute strength is not required, and since karate is more an art than a sport, one may become adept by learning its fundamentals, by constant practice in muscular control and body coordination. Thus, even the most slightly built women may learn a very sure means of self-defense. It is training, however, which is the most important single part of becoming a karate expert, for it is by training alone that the body can develop the skill and strength needed in practice of this art. Thus, one of the tests of proficiency consists of breaking three one-inch boards with the fist or feet, or cracking ten pieces of slate with one blow.
Another way of increasing one's strength is by using weights on the hands and feet, a practice aid which is now used in various kinds of bodybuilding as well. After mastering the fundamentals, the student is ready for freestyle practice. Unlike the sparring practice, here the attack is not prearranged. By this time, the karate student is able to stop his kicks and pull his punches just short of contact. This he must do in practice, or very shortly he would have no one to practice with. This freestyle practice can be quite dangerous if the contestants are careless or over-aggressive, but it does add an element of competition and gives excellent training in accuracy and confidence. As more and more people realize that karate need not be deadly, but may rather be a controlled and exercise sport, giving the students absolute body control, it is expected that these freestyle matches will transform karate into an accepted sport. Two, three. as a most effective scientific technique of self-defense is gaining popularity not only in the specialized institutes teaching it but also in offices, in homes, in the country and in schools. It is also becoming a part of the regular training of the American Air Police stationed in Japan. There is every prospect that karate will soon cease being a purely Japanese art and will gradually spread throughout all the countries of the world becoming both a sport and a superb means of self-defense. Karate's present stage of high development is due to Mr. Funakoshi, the man who gave karate its first Japanese exhibition and who has devoted his life to the teaching and perfecting of this art. Formerly regarded as somewhat esoteric, its fundamentals were kept secret and were passed on from master to select students. Now it is on its way to becoming a worldwide art. <laughs> In its emphasis on successful defense, karate is based on the highest principles of sportsmanship and fair play. Its practice gives excellent all-round exercise and aids in muscular development. It also teaches poise and self-confidence. Because of its deep devotion to the principles of self-defense, karate is obviously not a sport which will appeal to those who want to use it as an instrument of attack or who are merely interested in the amount of damage they may inflict through its use. Since it does not teach how to harm others, but rather how to protect oneself, it will therefore attract only those who wish to combine clean sport with a tangible accomplishment. In this way, karate is an art, one of the most austerely practiced, and it is also a sport, one of the most rewarding ever devised.